send hi in particular to two very special people that are listening. This is like a huge, crazy blast from the past in two completely different ways. So there was this girl named Amy that I met when I was in seventh grade in junior high in California. And um, she spoke to me on the gym playground She came up to me and asked me if I had any friends and then uh, became not only my friend, but became my best friend for several years. Now, when I moved away and when my life got all crazy, I never really saw her again, except for maybe a couple of times, like in and around high school to grab pot. We like didn't go to the same high school and didn't really keep in touch afterwards, but she found me on Instagram. She is listening to the podcast. She sent me like multiple messages, even including like a bunch of pictures from when I was like 12 years old. It was so funny. Um, I'll definitely post those soon on the page uh, with her permission, of course. And she just had a kid and like we caught up and like social media is so cool for this reason in particular. Like I haven't seen this girl since I was 13. We picked up right back where we were and like just had this immediate intimacy, not only from the podcast, but from our shared experiences and her sort of like reflecting back on what my life was like and her perception of it then and then hearing all of this stuff now. So like if you're one of those people, because a ton of people that I like have known throughout the course of my life, you know, have come upon this podcast through social media. Um, If you're one of them, please, please write me a message because I love hearing from you and reconnecting from you and also like fucking post it on your page so other people can hear about it. Uh, The next one is Julia Gulia. So this girl and I went to like college in the same town, but we went to different schools and we ended up sort of having like a a romance with the same guy and then became like best friends because of that, because we both got like burned from this like icky loser. Her and I were like super close, but we sort of had like an interesting and like weird relationship. You know, I don't think she really knew what to make of me. She didn't totally know everything about my life. You know, I was still sort of in a phase where I was lying to people and like not really in like a good place like mentally but like she is like a spiritual guidepost for me the stuff that she said to me at that time in my life when I knew her and we were close is stuff that I repeat to myself over and over again and have repeated to other people over and over again and have found it so instrumental and helpful in my own life and other people's lives and it's like a result of this connection that we had you know fucking 10 years ago and you know she wrote me a letter when I was in prison and she contacted me on social media found my podcast now she's like right in it with me we like text it's fucking cool I love her so much and I will share some of this wisdom with you that she told me when I was like you know a big young stupid idiot and I'm still making all the same mistakes she would always tell me to be gentle with myself and that it's an inside job and like she'd kind of repeat these I don't even want to call them like platitudes but these mantras that really like ended up meaning so much to me later on in my life she's the person who shared the don't don't blame the lettuce story I think I've told that on here before but like Julia fuck dude I love you I am like so spiritually connected to you and you are a huge light in my life um so thanks for listening thanks for hitting me up you guys i want to hear from more of you um i would also love to hear your stories please email me at that time i got arrested let me know about your story let's talk about it let's have you on the pod it doesn't matter where you are like hit me up uh also on social media that time i got arrested on instagram be casper on instagram tell your friends subscribe give us a five-star review write a review i've been seeing a lot of new reviews on there and i'm really super grateful Every time someone does that, I just want you to know how much I fucking love and appreciate you. This podcast is all I have. Um, I've been pretty miserable and having a rough time lately, you know, in my personal life. And I think that you guys have sort of like seen this evolution from, you know, fucking October to now, you know, where I've just sort of had a lot of ups and downs and you've been there with me. So thanks for sticking with me. This episode is really special to me. In particular, it's my friend, James Gabbert. He just got out of prison. 
three weeks ago, and we've been friends for 10 years, and we're besties, and he's here to tell me about what that experience was like from start to finish. It's a long episode. It's worth it. This is honestly probably the best episode I will ever release and have released to date because it's funny, it's insightful, it's weird, and it's very, very intimate, and I know that's what you guys like because you all love to tell me that, so... I love you. Um, yeah, thanks. Thanks for everything. My name is B. Casper, and my entire life has been a lie. That's not even my real name. But don't worry, I'm going to tell you all of my secrets. This isn't the story of how I became an orphan. This isn't the story about how I jumped off a five-story building and survived. This isn't about how I died and came back funny. This is that time I got arrested. you want to explain how we met? I'm not uh, entirely sure. <laughs> okay. It's been fuck? so long. <laughs> yeah, so I, I was a teenager when we met, correct? Yes, like 19, I believe. Yeah, yeah, I was like was barely, not even 20. Because I was barely in my 20s. I don't want to make it sound like I was a creep. No, no, no. But like, okay, so we like, met through friends of friends. Definitely did. <laughs> I, believe there was, I believe there was drugs involved. Yeah, so we used to sell drugs together, essentially. Allegedly. <laughs> We kind of started out like, I mean, I mean, I think you had been in it for a little bit longer, but we started out like in the same place. We were kind of like mid-level yeah. weed dealers. Yeah. And so the way our relationship worked is like sometimes I would get weed from you and sometimes right. you would get weed from me and it would usually be between like a quarter right. pound to like two pounds, I think right. is like or the Or sometimes most. we would go in together and try to get... Right, right. I mean, we made a lot of like... In the beginning of our friendship, we made a lot of really interesting, like long drives yes. to like weird houses. It was like during like a <laughs> like a really weird drought in the in the weed game at the time. Yeah, there was some um, like big truck that it got like it had two hundred pounds of weed in yeah. it that got confiscated, and then so there was no weed anywhere, right. and so we were constantly like, "Do you have weed? Do you have weed?" Because we had all these customers. Right, like you and I were both moving at least a pound a week, if not. Two to three in the beginning, yeah. Right. And it started small, <laughs> right? That's what I mean. And, but and then and there was a point where like neither of us could find weed. Yeah, yeah, which is crazy. Yeah, and just like too many people to keep up with, and that's what people don't understand. If like if you don't have product, then yeah. like you are not in business. Right, <laughs> I mean, and there I was guess no one. Right, and there was no wouldn't other. Wouldn't understand that. No, they don't. They don't remember what it was like. It's not like now. It's not like a. Well, weed now it's fantasy like, fantasy land. Yeah, there's where, weed everywhere. It's becoming legal. Like, how do you actually? I'm really interested in that. Like, especially now where you're at, just getting out of prison and like being a former drug dealer. Like, what do you feel about marijuana getting legalized? Because I have like such mixed feelings about it. Like, it's great because I want to buy weed. And so, like, that's very convenient for me. But then at the same time, I'm like, but hey, what the fuck? You know what I mean? Like I went to fucking prison for this. Well, they say they're gonna we're gonna get. Uh, no, it was not felonies. They're gonna clear people who have charges who aren't felonies. No, they're because they talked about uh, trafficking. What do you mean? In the oh, they changed that in the law when they signed it because they had like thirty to five hundred grams I in the know. law. I I don't know the amount, but I what I read was misdemeanors that they're going to clear all former misdemeanors. I heard that, yeah. But if you have like a felony, I think there's a way the state's allowing you to like apply with legal help to get it expunged. Interesting, but but you can't exp you can't expunge a prison sentence though. I don't know how that works. Well, let me tell you because I'm a little further along. For those of you who don't already know, James just recently got out of prison three weeks ago. Yep. And you were in jail for how long? 23 months. 23 months. So um, the way that you sort of get like a prison sentence off of your record is you have to wait seven years, just like an expungement, but then, and like not get arrested in that seven years. And then you have to apply for a pardon of your sentence, like to the governor and the governor decides whether or not you get a pardon. And out of all of the pardons that, are, that of people who apply, I think the last governor Rauner was, was doing like a record number of pardons. He was, approving like 20%, which is very high. But 
typically you apply and you don't even really get approved to get it taken off your record. Like that's why they call it having an X on your back. No, I get that. I just think there's something they put into this law. I could be wrong. I haven't done a whole bunch of research. Past the headline, Illinois legalizes marijuana. Yeah. Yeah. So how do you feel about it? So like 20-year-old me probably would have been pissed and probably would have been more of an advocate of like making the proper law changes. But um, now that I'm out, I'm on parole. Yeah. The fact that legalized cannabis is right on the corner sounds fantastic. It is fantastic. You know. In and, some ways. Right. And now that I'm no longer... So I, I got out of the, the weed game pretty early for the most part other than just helping associates out, friends. So that aspect doesn't affect me as much as it does the fact that the legality takes that extra pressure off of off of just my daily life. Yeah. Like I've been I've been I've been waiting for this day my whole life. Yeah. Yeah. Legal, All right. Legal weed in Illinois. Well, I'm glad that that's good for you because I love you and I only want good things for you. I so that's that's great. So we met, we started sort of selling drugs in tandem. We sort of like went in different directions. You and I have a lot of connections as far as like drug right. drug dealing game goes. And we were friends for such a long time through that. But then like ultimately I, I would say you are without a doubt one of my best closest friends that I've had for such a seriously long time. Even though we don't see each other like super often, we've always been very like close friends. Yeah, like one day we just started hanging out. Yeah. It was just like Well, cuz we have a lot in common and when I was 19 yeah. and we met in my apartment and I was like ha, 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 this like sunshine and rainbows hippie like lighter slinging like yeah. you know. So you were you were definitely in your flower child phase, uh, phase of your development. Which like I look different now, right? You definitely do. There's a lot <laughs> less uh patchwork. <laughs> Involved in your closing. A lot less, less rainbow. Yeah. yeah. So you're definitely full into the full hippie flower part. And I recently had just gotten out of it. As I'm about two and a half, I think, three years older than you. Yeah. So I had recently just gotten out of it. When I first met you, you were all about the power of love. All in. You had a website. Yeah. Yeah. The Legion of Voluntary Empowerment. Dot My, org. No, no. It was called acceptlove.org. Acceptlove.org. Yeah. It was. <laughs> Yeah, I had a website. I was like, I was, I used to steal lighters from large bastardized yes. corporations and then I would paint them with nail polish. Never from mom and pop lighter dispensaries. <laughs> well, I mean, I didn't steal them from like bodegas. I stole them from like Target and Walmart and right. Walgreens, you know, and I'd paint them with nail polish and they all said love on them. And then I'd give them away for free and I'd be like, hey, go on my website and like love each other. <laughs> so fucking stupid. And that, and so stupid. That entertained the hell out of me at the time. <laughs> A lot of people thought it was very... I, I ended up stealing, painting, and giving away over 2,000 lighters. Oh, I believe it. You over were, the course of like two years, I think, is how long I did it. Intense. I mean, you used to send out uh, daily affirmation text messages. Oh, my God. I know. That's like when mass texting like first became a thing. I, would, I called it my DDOL, my daily dose of love. And I'm like, I'm trying to utilize technology to promote positivity. And this was like before Facebook, before Instagram, you know? Yeah, you were definitely... A pioneer. I uh, thank you. I mean, I try really hard to be intentional with my social media now. I try to like post stuff that I think is beautiful and interesting and real and like heartfelt. You know, I try to do everything with some kind of intention of like, I'm sharing something that is meaningful to me in this moment instead of just this like, look at my lunch, like look at my face, like look at my shoes. Like I just fucking, what the fuck are you talking about? But these, I want to die. Like, what do you mean? You know, these text messages were so like, uh, meant to be like positive and uplifting. <laughs> and the first one, it came with no disclaimer, mind you. <laughs> just a it's random, just a random time. text message where it's like, <laughs> from your drug dealer, <laughs> you're, you're special. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> And you're beautiful. Yeah. So the first time I'm like, what the fuck? What's <laughs> wrong with this yeah. girl? Well, I'm like, I'm like, obviously she meant to text somebody else. This. <laughs> and like, but like the second one, I like asked you, I'm like, what the fuck is going on? And you're like, oh, it's my daily affirmation text messages. <laughs> so fucking lame, dude. So, so, and then it's like about like a week or two go by and there's always super personal. I was like, you, <laughs> you are beautiful. You are amazing. No one. So I had to text you like two, three weeks in. I'm like, you know, every dude you send this to, 
<laughs> now wants to fuck you. Well, and he, thinks. That I want it you back. You want to fuck him. Right. You know, I think that explains why a lot of my guy friendships have imploded because they've been like, what do you mean we're not I'm not going to lie to you. The first one I got, I was like. Oh, she, she loves me? <laughs> no. No. I thought, is she drunk? <laughs> I, didn't, well, I didn't think anything crazy. <laughs> Like she's drunk. That's so funny because I like, don't even drink. That's why I was like, <laughs> this would explain everything. Right. No, but by 19, I was already past, like, I like did not drink anymore. No. You know, that's so funny. No, and I didn't. I think that's the reason we hung a lot too. Is I didn't really consume a lot of, I, mean, I will drink. Yeah. But. Um, no, but you're not like, you're not one of those dudes that's like trying to get drunk. No, not anymore. No, I did. Well, but, I don't know if I've ever been around you. No, I got out of that right around the same time you did. So right when we met, sure. I had just stopped. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And I mean, we were just are and have been. I mean, I haven't seen you in a fucking hot minute. That's like we just really caught up in the car ride because like the last time we saw each other, I had like just gotten out of the hospital. Yes, you did. After I jumped out of a building. Yes, I had just got out of rehab both at very high points. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I don't even remember what we right, did. The world, the world was our oyster at that moment. <laughs> I'm pretty sure, like, we did what we always did. We were just like, got high, we talked, and yep. th- and that was like, that was it. Well, I would come and visit you in the hospital. Sometime yeah, I remember I that. Was up there. Yeah, it was so area. sweet of you. You'd come in like a suit and tie. It was really funny, and you'd like sit there for hours. And I would like sometimes I would like fall asleep, and I just would like it's something about you knowing me. Like you've known me for so long. I remember I like fell asleep once because I was like. Uh, high on Dilaudid and awesome. I and, and I said something I was like don't go <laughs> and you just and, I, and you like you like legit like stayed and like waited because I just like I mean I basically just like nodded out for a little bit and you stayed and I woke up and you were still there and that's like that's like one of those weird friendship things where it's like like even though I haven't seen you in two years like we'll never not be that no. close you know it's almost become more like a familiar like a family yeah thing at this point like, yeah but I mean you've told me many oh, yeah. times that I'm yeah. your best man. I all have all female friends for the most part. So <laughs> I'll have like, uh, uh, what do you mean, maid, uh, bridesmaids or uh, groomsmaids. Well, you're you're a real, and we were talking about this earlier too, you're a real uh, guy's girl or a real girl's guy. I am. I wouldn't insult you and call you a feminist, you know, to your face or anything like that. But I do That's think not- that like you are not a misogynist, which is no. such a fucking crazy rare thing. And you just got out of prison. So like, yeah. that's crazy. And I mean, I want to talk, there's so much that I want to talk about. This is going to be like one of the longer episodes that I've ever done just because there's so much to cover. But let's sort of go back and tell me, so like we used to sell drugs together. We sort of stopped and like went our separate ways as far as like drug dealing went when I moved to Asheville and then like you were sort of, I mean, is it okay if I talk about this? Okay. So you got into dope and like, and we went in different directions, you know? Yeah. But okay. So explain what happened like when we stopped hanging out and then you started, like how long did you, I mean, how, how did the dope start? Like, I remember we did pills together. Yeah. That's pretty much how it started is I had a back surgery in like the early 2000s. Okay. So I had picked up uh, a taste for the Oxycontin. Like the the doctors, uh, I had a, was a cyst removed from the base of my spine. So I had a pretty long healing period and a pretty uh, high prescription dose of painkillers. And yeah. the doctor came to me, this was like uh, probably 2003 or four, something like that, early, early 2000s. And they're like, oh, we're going to put you on painkillers, but... Don't worry, it's a less addictive form of painkiller. It's less addictive than Vicodin. It's called Oxycontin. <laughs> oh, my God. Right. So oh, they, my God. Yeah, and they gave the whole spiel about how it's all, it's great, it's less addictive. So I go, I have the surgery. Move, I come home with this big gaping hole in my back, like I'm about, the, about the size of a golf ball because I had to let it heal from the inside out. What the fuck? Horrible. Okay. Best time of my life. Okay. <laughs> Best best way to spend three and a half to four months of your early twenties. Oh Jesus! On your stomach with a hole in your back. But on the plus side, you got like 120 oxycontins a month. 
Which, like, okay, I've been on the receiving end of, like, that kind of pain medicine, and it doesn't really take the pain away at all, but, no, like... you get so high, you don't care. Right, exactly. It's just, right. like, you're having a so good time. So it works. Right. It just doesn't... <laughs> While you're miserable. Right. Uh, and then you just... When I got out of the hospital, I and I had been in the hospital for almost six months. When I got out, I was only on painkillers for two weeks, and then when I fucking detoxed, it took me six weeks of, like... The worst flu I've ever had. Oh god, yeah. And and just like crippling depression and like a crazy psycho psycho sugar addiction. I'd like wake up in the middle of the night and pound pop tarts, and I had to, or I couldn't sleep. So like, you're on that shit. Oh yeah. And I mean, then what? Because you, how the fuck do you get off? Right. Well, right. And then meanwhile, you know, they they don't even start scaling it back. They're keeping me on it. And they then come to me, it's been about six months of four good strength, about 40 milligram oxycontins a day on top of six to six to eight Norco a day. And then they just uh, they just took it away. They were like, oh, uh, we can't give these to you anymore. Remember when we came to you and told you that they were a less addictive painkiller? We meant horribly, cripplingly addictive, so... Go fuck yourself. Right. My doctor was like, we're going to wean you off. And by wean you off, he meant give me a script of 10. So is that how it happened? Yeah, that's how I started. Uh, I got sick the first time. You did dope? No, I didn't. I, I, that's why I started buying pills on the sly. Oh, okay. Uh, so uh, I had vowed that like, I'm never, you know, I like you said, a detox flu. Yeah. I avoided that from 2006 until 2000. 15. Damn. Perhaps just unless I was incarcerated, I did not. Yeah. But no, I started uh, messing with the pills and you run your little scams there where you have a couple of people going to pain clinics. Yeah. You pay them a couple hundred dollars, fill the scripts. Doo, 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 doo. Uh, what really got me and a lot of other people, I think, too, like in my situation in the dope, was they uh, changed the formula to Oxycontin. To protect the patent, they made it a new abuse proof formula of Oxycontin so they can't sell any more generics. I remember, so you couldn't like... You can't alter it. Or you used to like scratch the coating off of it, you know? Right, and then you can crush it up, sniff it, or crush it up and take yeah. it as a powder. Right, right. I used to get 70s and do that yeah. before I'd get a bikini wax. I mean, like, yep. I I like opiates. I just think in like small doses. Yeah, you can't. You know? But it's a slippery slope and it like, how, and the fuck, it feels good. Like, how do you fucking stop? Right, yeah, you don't, you don't like throw everything away in your life, like your job, all your friends, your family, because it makes you, you feel, feel like, like shit. Do you feel like that's what happened to you? Oh, God, yeah. Yeah, I gave up. That was like the most, like, so after they changed the pills, I started doing dope. And at first you get super excited because it's real cheap. Yeah. In relationship with the pills. And it's just as effective. It's more effective. Okay. So yeah, yeah, I mean, I've never done heroin, but I'm very curious. So. Yeah, I don't recommend it. Yeah. I mean, I want to do it once, maybe just a little, but like, uh, you know. You don't, though. Like, unless, like, unless, like, you get, like, a, a terminal illness well, diagnosis. No, I want to, like. Or you're 80. After I get my first book published, I want to go to Iceland and then do it under. Oh, Icelandic heroin? Nor- Northern Lights, you know what I mean? Like yeah. Aurora Borealis and heroin. Doesn't that sound That's great? super romantic. I know. I mean, I'd, I'd love to go with, like, a boyfriend, but it's hard to convince someone to do that with me. Right, and then also, like, the uh, casual heroin user who can afford I mean, a just the Iceland. one time. <laughs> just a little. It's going to be. Everyone needs to relax about the heroin in Iceland. It right, sounds like saying. a. I don't know. It sounds like an exciting adventure to Can I me. tell you what's going to happen? What? I'm going to come back and be hooked on heroin forever. No, you're going to throw up under the northern lights. <laughs> no, that's why I would get um, a little bit of Zofran. I would get some Zofran and some Benadryl, and then I'd take that before I did the heroin so I wouldn't itch or get sick. The Benadryl is going to I thought about this. Yeah, no, it gets yeah. you higher. They there did is that- a synergenic effect between... They used to give me that little cocktail in the hospital, and I was like, that is so smart, and I will never not do heroin like oh, that, you know? That's how, I mean, that's how. So I stopped doing the pills, started buying the blow. The blow habit got out of control. Because the difference, really, when you're starting to do it, is that with pills, there's still a limit. Yeah. There's only so many pills out there. Yeah. Not the case with dope. Yeah. So you can go out of control. Yeah. Super fun. 
It's weird because it's not like during this time in your life, it's not like we never saw each other, but like from the beginning of our friendship to like this phase in your life, we saw each other less and less, but we'd always, we'd still find each other and we'd still hang out and we'd still kind of like, like get together and have like this really close friendship, even though we weren't selling drugs together anymore. But like, so when did things get like, cause I remember you, you started getting arrested a lot. Yes. When did things like pick up from just like you being a user to like now you're getting busted for shit? Well, I mean, I've always gotten arrested. <laughs> quite a you're bit. kinda like me, right? Yeah, I, 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 listen, I, listen, I listen to your intro. I was like, I'm gonna have to check <laughs> and see, because I know I'm triple digits. Yeah. I know um Right, right. I mean, cause like we used to get like fucking Let's tell a story about Wisconsin, our ride home from Sound Tribe. Do you remember that? I vaguely remember it. I remember was were we was I rolling? Was somebody rolling? We both both were on ecstasy. That's okay. Both took ecstasy at the I think it was the rave, right? Yes. Yeah. So we went to the rave. We saw Sound Tribe. We were driving back. I was driving. I was speeding. Then we got pulled over. And oh, like some big fat state trooper. <laughs> it was like right as we were getting off the highway, we were maybe 10 minutes away from yeah, home. From Illinois. And fucking he pulled me out of the car to do a field sobriety test because I wouldn't let him search the car. We had smoked weed pretty recently and we had like yeah, a bowl and like weed. 20 minutes, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> and before. he pulled me out of the car and he tried to do a field sobriety test and I was like, like laughing at the cop in the cop's face because I'm like, I haven't had a lick to drink all night, but I was high as a kite and I was wearing a really ridiculous outfit. I'm pretty sure I was wearing like a skirt, a oh, shirt pro. as a skirt. Right. You were still in the, <laughs> this was early. This was still in the, in the love child phase. The deep hippie phase. My, my friend Jordy describes my, my former style as like a hippie threw up on me. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it definitely is. Like weird Ugg boots. <laughs> they Patrick said, skirts. They said love on them. Yeah, it was it was hideous. You were a mess. <laughs> I still am. <laughs> it's okay, so Hannah, you remember Hannah, my friend Hannah? Vaguely. Okay, so Hannah told me recently that she doesn't like listening to the podcast because I like like say these things that make it sound like funny. You know what I mean? When like she really knows me and like you really know me, like I make it sound funny and maybe like a joke or like composed, but like my life has been so fucked up (laughs) and I personally am such a fucked up individual as like a result of that. And I feel like you can, not to say that you're fucked up because I think you're great, but like getting into dope as heavy as you did, like that's kind of fucked up, man. I'm kind of fucked up, man. I know. I love you, but I'm just saying. So like, so then like what happened? Like, how did you start getting arrested? And then like to the point where now you're spending two years in jail. You get sloppy. Yeah. That's what you do. And then moves I was making, which normally which is basic data stuff. You get, you get sloppy. I started driving without a license a lot. Mm -hmm. And uh, I ended up kind of getting screwed over by a friend. Uh, but I ended up getting popped over on six corners. What uh, is that? And uh, it's where Michigan, or not Michigan, I'm sorry, Milwaukee, Cicero, and Irving Park meet. Oh, okay. There's the Sears right up there. Yeah. So I ended up getting popped there with 135 grams of dope. What? Yeah. Why did you have so much? Because you, uh, you ever been to Costco? <laughs> Sam's Club. Okay, sure. That makes right. sense. That's, but were you selling See, the dope? police didn't buy that story. <laughs> As quickly as you did. I wish you'd have been uh, the arresting officer. I wouldn't have made a good cop. No. I've been like, you're probably fine. Yeah, no, they, they, gave, me, they gave me intent to distribute. Well, I mean, obviously. But how is that obvious? That drives me nuts. <laughs> <laughs> like, if you if you pulled me over and you popped my trunk. Yeah. And I had like 20 cases of Capri Sun. <laughs> you would not immediately assume my intention is to individually sell those Capri Suns. Mind you, they're clearly marked. <laughs> Not for resale. <laughs> on the package. So that could be an illegal activity. Right. But no, because you find me with like 
you know, an eighth of a kilo of heroin. Sure. I automatically, I'm a <laughs> heroin dealer. I'm a, I'm a heroin, not just a smart consumer. Okay, but real talk, we, I don't even, because I don't really know this no, part of I your mean, life. No, I like to find. Yeah, okay, you know? so, okay, so yes. So yeah. yeah, what the fuck? When did that, I mean, like, how did yeah, I, just, like, not yeah, that how did I miss that, but like, I mean, why? Well, because there was a good, like, four and a half, five years of my life where, like, if you weren't, like, giving me money to get heroin. Yeah. Or giving me a ride to get heroin. Yeah. I or get, selling me heroin. Yeah, okay. Or we were doing heroin. Sure, right. I had, no, why? Why would I? Why would I call you? Well, I know, but I remember I saw you. Uh, I saw you pro- probably like because we we see each other maybe like quarterly. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like every, financially, <laughs> every financial quarter, every check like in. four to six months, we'll like get together and like hang out and get higher. Like you've always been the person where yeah, I'm like just check in. Well, I mean, I'm I'm like going through a breakup. I need to go out and do drugs. Right. And I mean, like I love you, I but I do call you when I'm in I that do place. End you know, up just to see you. Every time you have like a horrible breakup, I know I'm like a real shitty guardian angel <laughs> that shows up like ten minutes late. Well, I have really spectacular taste in men. You do, <laughs> so that's why we see each other quarterly. <laughs> right. So, fuck. So, like, whenever I would see you, it would usually be like. Oh, I just OD'd and I'm sober. Yeah. Or like, oh, I just got arrested and I'm sober. Right. Or like, you know, because I, I would I was, usually. I was lying. Well, oh. I mean, about the sober part, probably. Well, I mean, I didn't fucking know. I always believed you. I was always like, yeah. And like, we never, like, we did drugs together, but we never right. did dope, you no, know? No, I so, never. I mean, we did, we did pills one night and I remember I like yeah, got like, really sick and passed out. Right. I had to like rub your feet. Yeah. <laughs> For like an hour and a half. Well, because the cigarette made me feel like I was going to puke. And then I was like dizzy for literally like three hours. I couldn't even stand up. And And I mean, we, we, like I did less than you and you were like so chill. You know what I'm doing right now? What? Picturing your night under the, (laughs) under the Northern Lights in Iceland. (laughs) Your Icelandic hair. (laughs) Couldn't even handle a goddamn 40 milligram (laughs) oxygen. Oh, shit, I'm heroin under the northern lights. I know, but I do like pills sometimes. I've said yeah, it before great. and I'll say it again. Oxys and anal sex. Right, like, right. try it. There you go. You know? That's, I want to make like t-shirts that say right, that. I'm, f- <laughs> I'm for that. I think America is for that. I think that's actually Pete Buttigieg's. <laughs> that's a bumper sticker. It should be. Oxycontin. Yeah, I'm mean, honest with you. If there Merch was, like, coming soon. If there was a way that I could like do opiates... Without the horrible <laughs> side, side effects, effects and consequences. Sure. Who I, wouldn't want to be high out of their gourd? But I'm just saying, so we never did those fucking no. drugs together, no. though. We would do coke. We'd do acid. Yeah. We'd do molly. No. We would. 2CB ne- or whatever. 2CI <laughs> whatever. We never drank. No. And, I mean, we got high every single time we seen yeah, each other. Yeah, definitely smoked a ridiculous. Amount of weed. Amounts of weed. But that's, you know, par for the course. Right. It doesn't count. No. <laughs> it's, it's just a plant. It's not even cool anymore. <laughs> it's not even cool. It's not, it's like you talk about like selling weed like back in the day and like really in, in the in the in the current I don't know what you call it Climate. environment right yeah. yeah who cares yeah right oh, you sold some. yeah and now people, that's people so don't crazy realize, this was ten years ago this was this is a big got, deal you were very subversive you got caught with a quarter pound of weed you were going to jail I did go to jail <laughs> I've also <laughs> been to jail yeah you're gonna go do prison time for weed yeah wow. Kids today. <laughs> I don't get you know, the struggle. I feel like that officially makes us like non millennials because we've been to jail for a weed right. in a serious capacity. Right. Like that's like what makes us like officially the last of the Gen Xers so, or some sort of pseudo hybrid. Yes. So you got arrested and OD'd and went to rehab and like all this shit happened, but you never really did any serious time because you're A, white, yep. B, a male. B. See, like upper middle class, money. You have like a family and resources, so you've never really had to spend and see serious consequences no. until this. Which I I thought you were like, and I don't I don't actually know, so correct me if I'm wrong. I thought you were on probation. Well, uh, I was, and then the judge revoked it. Because Why you violated? I had violated it previously, and that's what sent me to rehab. Okay. And then I completed the rehab, turned all the stuff in. They said I didn't turn the stuff in. I go to explain myself on the first court date. And the judge is like, I'm revoking your probation. And I'm like, well, this should be fun. So they put a $10,000 bond on me and remanded me into custody. That's fucked. Yeah. 
I mean, it's like cool and also like sucks for everyone else that you got away with. Not sucks for everyone else, but I just feel like white privilege sucks for everyone oh, else, yeah, you know? Does, but don't hate the player, baby. <laughs> hate the game. <laughs> right. I mean, like you didn't choose to be white any more than someone right. chooses to be not white. So it's like you benefited from that for so long and then and then like the buck stopped yeah, eventually. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I just... Uh, the, the drug I had was too hot of an option because I've never, I've been arrested a lot, but I've never committed any violent offenses. I think I, right. sh- I shoplifted once when I was like 17, <laughs> but pretty much uh, my rap sheet can because of possessions or again, uh, intent or delivery charges. Yeah. So really, why would you send me to jail anyway? <laughs> I know, I, you're an addict. <laughs> I think, you know what I mean? I'm just, you know. Yeah. Uh, so, so okay, so what was the actual thing? Was it that all of that heroin on Six Corners? Mm-hmm. And then And then you were on probation for that? Yeah. And then the judge revoked your probation? Correct. Why did he revoke your probation? Be, well, like I said, uh, they, had, they had put a warrant out for me saying I didn't complete my treatment. Okay. But this was after I'd already been... Discharge, and so I go to court with all my certificates and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. And the judge uh, brought up an old failed drug test, mm. and I uh, just revoked my probation. And it's that it's fucking that easy. Yep. And then you got sentenced to two years, four years, four years. We served two fifty percent. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, because the nonviolent offense is you get day for day. Yeah, it depends on what charge you have in Illinois, but you can get fifty percent, sixty percent. 75%, 85%. Yeah, I got 50% too because uh, mine was same. 90%, unless you have like a, a real high drug case or a violent case, you're most of at 50%. Yeah, so that means every day you serve, you get an extra credit. Right. So if you have eight years, you do four years. Yeah. You do, right? yep. So you got sentenced to four, you had to serve two. Yep. You just got out three weeks ago. Yes. Let's, I mean, we just fucking saw each other today for the first time since all that's about... Fuck! I'm so excited to have this conversation because I have yet to have anyone on this show that's actually done like time the way that we have. Yeah. And also, I remember when I got out of jail too. Like we were hanging out and like we would talk about jail all the time because it's like we can't have these conversations no, with anyone I, else. Because I had done three months, nine months, yeah, six months in, in county. county. Yeah. <laughs> so now you just got out of prison, baby. Yeah, I got my I got my number and everything. Oh. Do you remember your number? You don't have to say it. Why do you think I have Oh, God. I'm never, how are you never going to forget that? Yeah. I mean, that's right there, 745. Yeah. Yeah, For sure. For sure. I mean, you have to say it fucking. You have an M number? (laughs) Wait, what? You have an M number? No. uh, uh, Four. Wait, an R. R number? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Nice. Yeah. That's some street cred right there. R (laughs) number. No, I had no idea. This has got like real IDOC specific. <laughs> Thank you for tuning in to IDOC chat. <laughs> Seriously, I mean, like that's kind of what this is. But like, so what the fuck was it like in prison? I'm going for two years, that's a long fucking time. Yeah, it was crazy. I felt like 11 months was my whole life, you know? Yeah, well, and the best part was it was like full of surprises. Full of surprises. Start from the beginning. So the first surprise. Were you in Cook County? Yes. Oh, fuck, dude. Awesome, right? <laughs> oh, my God. Only the worst county prison in the entire it country. Is. It's the most violent prison in North America. Yeah, I mean, like, the a worst in every way. A continent that has Mexico in it. <laughs> and Cook County Jail is the most violent jail in North America. Yeah, and, I mean, the most corrupt, I would argue. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I didn't really do a whole lot of time. I did... Uh, at first, in the case where I bonded out, I did uh, three months. Okay, in county. Uh, yeah, and then I bonded out. Yeah, nice. Bought the case, got the probation deal, got it revoked. My lawyer, uh, we go to court, they work out a thing for boot camp. Oh, uh, boot camp. So yeah. we were talking about this earlier. I got offered boot camp, and I said, I got offered nine months of boot camp, boot camp and I said no, because they told me that I was going to have to shave my head. Yeah. And I had, you remember how long my hair was. Yep. So I was just like, fuck, no. What's hilarious is that I got beat up so much in prison for having long hair that I eventually cut it all right. off. <laughs> <laughs> jokes I knew. Could have been home earlier. Right. And been fit. Yeah, I know. Instead, I just got huge. Yeah, so I go to Cook County for like two weeks. Not that bad. If you've been there, once you've been there, your first time Cook County is your first like, What? 
Like, because I had been to like McHenry, McHenry Blake County, and Lake County, and, yeah, yeah, a bunch of other little yeah. first time. You know, your early twenties, you go to Cook County. You're like, okay, this is what real jail's like. Yeah. So you've been there a couple of times. Once you know what you're in for, it's not that bad. Yeah. So I get to NRC, which is it's, uh, the Northern Receiving Center in Joliet, Southside Stateville Prison. Oh my God. Worst experience of my life. Yeah. It's awesome. Tell me why. So they take you there in a bus, what well, strip search? Yeah. Then a couple they, of times. Yeah, a couple of times. Then you go sit in a, a big ass bird cage looking bullpen. For four and a half to eight hours, depending on how fast they feel like moving that day. <laughs> and then you go, uh, they walk you to where you're going to be staying for the next 24 hours a day, seven days a week until you find your placement. Yeah. Which is a real sweet. Getting your security clearance. Yeah. So you go in a little two man, smaller than a regular two man cell, two yep. man receiving cell. Yeah. It's so small. it's like eight foot by six foot. Yep. Ridiculously small. So I was supposed to go to boot camp. So I'm waiting for a week. Fuck, dude. And you do have to wait there until they pick you up from boot camp. I remember that. Yep. And then you come for another week. And then a letter comes. I'm like, what? A letter? No one gets mail. <laughs> this can't be good. Yeah. So I take a letter. It turns out I had an open case in Indiana. Oh, yeah. From 2012. It was, do you want to say what it can? It's a, it's a driving case. Small, it's a misdemeanor driving case. Yeah. And uh, that open case prohibited me from getting boot camp. Oh, my God. Yeah. So then I waited another, uh, normally you're in NRC for two to three weeks. I was in there for about 45 days. That's a long time. Yeah, where they only let you out uh, for a shower once a week. Yeah, I remember that. Yes. Fuck, dude, I remember that. And then they take you out to yard, which is like a... Oh, they never took us out to yard. And you go once a week and it's like a 12 foot by 50 foot cage <laughs> and they just set you outside for three hours. Yeah. So that people can just fight. That's it. Yeah. And they can fuck your cells up while you're inside. <laughs> it's awesome. Right. Yeah. So this is interesting, but like what I noticed in women's prisons versus men's prisons is we didn't get raided like nearly as oh, much. Oh, no, we had. I mean like once every blue moon, really. But it was also like... It was such a corrupt environment that was so much about like, like, and we'll get into this a little bit later, but like you guys had everything that we had, but we got it very differently. Oh, I believe it. You know what I mean? Ours was a sex trade mm -hmm. and yours was like a monetary trade. Yeah. So, I mean, you fucking didn't stop being who you were No. in jail. It doesn't stop. You just got to wait till you get the lay of the land, especially as like a first time... Yeah. Uh, offender. Did you start buying drugs in county or did you get drugs in oh, prison? Oh, no. I had bought, you buy drugs. I mean, I didn't have time in county, really. Right, right. So we wait, you know, really not until you get, uh, get to prison. Yeah. Once you get to prison, the economy's there. Uh, everything's available. You can pretty much get everything you want in prison except for the keys to the front door. <laughs> Which is so funny because I feel like that's all anyone really wants. Yeah, exactly. But I mean, I don't, I also feel like it sort of works out in the guards' benefit where if the prisoners are fucking high, like the chance of revolt is so much lower. Yeah, you would think that's how that works. That's not how that works. I mean, I never saw a girl shoot up until I... I mean, I never saw anyone shoot up until I went to prison. Yeah, that's what's crazy. They get full on... Right, like a kid. in there. Right, and I just like... I'm like, is this fucking real, <laughs> you know? Like, I couldn't believe... I, and I, I'm like a conspiracy theorist. You know that I'm like a cuckoo bananas, mm -hmm. like little psycho. Like when it comes True. to like, I think everything's a conspiracy. I don't even feel like reality is real, you know? So it's like when I, but when I saw how fucking corrupt it was, I was, I was genuinely shocked. Were you shocked? I was excited. <laughs> <laughs> because it works out well yeah, for you. I, I was like, okay, I can... This is an environment I can operate in. All right. So then after Joliet, how you were there for 45 days, you now you find out, did they have to re-sentence you? No. Well, I had, uh, when they sent you a boot camp, it goes behind your sentence. Like if you don't, like if you got the boot camp, you would go for the boot camp. And if you fail the boot camp, you go for four years. Or yeah. so, so mine had four years behind it. Okay. And I had immediately defaulted to that. So Fuck. I went, right. So I went from... Uh, being all like in a eight foot by six foot room I'd been in for two weeks 
thinking I'm going to be home by Christmas of that year. Oh, my God. Yeah, then I find out that I got to leave 24 months. Her poor fucking girlfriend, too. Yeah, she was not happy about right, it. Right, because, I mean, I, like, I even remember when I sort of was trying to, like, find you, and I couldn't, and I, like, contacted her to be like, where is James, you know? And she and she told me, and she said you were going to be out a lot sooner. Mm-hmm. So it was like when that time came around, I, like, contacted her again, and I was like, hey, when is James getting out? And then, like, that's when I found out that you were even, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. going to be there for so much longer. And then and even then, she was, like, always thinking, like, oh, maybe he'll be home sooner, or, you know? So yeah. we were, like, all sort of, like, getting our information from her, trying to find out. How did you feel when you were like, well, now I'm going to be here for two years? I mean, when well, you go through all uh, five stages of grief real fast. <laughs> yeah. You know? I mean, I, I spazzed out at first. I mean, what are you, you know? Yeah. Like, there's nothing I can. Like, you're in an NRC, you have no phone. Yeah. Can't write anybody. No, you have no, nothing. Right. So I'm just going to wait it out. Yeah. Until I get to the prison. You go, you know, I spazzed out at first in that little two man cell. You think you're going to be home in a few months? And yeah. I remember that I sobbed for like a week straight. I like cried myself yeah, to sleep for a week you straight. You do. It's just, you, you freak out. You take a lot of um, them psych meds they offer you in receiving. <laughs> and you Which they are fucking trying to put you on some yeah, shit. Yeah, they do. And you might as well because you're stuck in a cell for 24 <laughs> hours with no TV, with nothing to read. You don't have anything to read? You have like scattered magazines and books. I sent myself books. Urban novels, which is... <laughs> Yeah. I read an entire urban novel that I'll use one variant of the their spelling. <laughs> and I'm reading the book and I can't fucking for the life of me figure out what is driving me nuts as I'm reading it. Right. I mean, it's a horrible story. I mean, you're like a low key grammar Nazi, just like me. I mean, it's just a little bit. I'm not a Nazi. I'm like, <laughs> I'm, sorry. I'm, a na- I'm, a, I'm a grammar nationalist. <laughs> oh my God. That's what I am. I'm not a Nazi. Sure, sure. I mean, I I should be right. really careful about what but I like, say right now know, anyways. Right. Yeah, get out of our sentences. <laughs> so. So? I read the whole book and just had T-H-E-R-E for every there. Yeah. It was theirs over there. <laughs> it was T-H-E-R-E, yes. It was awesome. All right. So, yeah, you had nothing to do but freak out about your situation. So, you get... Uh, you, then one day, like, or one night, I should say, like, one, two o'clock in the morning, they come by with your bag, tell you to give you all your stuff. Because after a while, you accumulate some things. Yeah. There. Yeah, because you have to buy, like, toothpaste. A few, and- a few envelopes. No, they <laughs> give you a little tiny <laughs> things of toothpaste. Wow, that's nice. We did not get stuff oh, like yeah, that. No, they gave us, and a little uh, hotel bar of soap every two days. <laughs> So they, you know what I mean? It's not. Yeah, no, we never got any of that shit. I'm not trying to make it out to be all bad. <laughs> And free soap. Well, it's very, di- it's like, I feel like the experience of going to prison is just, re- is really different when a, you're a guy versus a girl because men work together and women work yeah, for themselves. Yeah, you're catty. Yeah, I mean, fucking women yeah. are tough, you know? It's tough to get a group of women to work together for a common goal because everyone has a different idea of what that goal is and everyone has different motivations for reaching that goal, whereas men can sort of very clearly see, like, this benefits all of us, so we're going to do this together. Yeah, or at least not and men in general. Like, they click up, like, uh, whether it be a gangs or, or even not so much race, Per se, but that's the first thing when you get off the bus at your like whatever uh, institution you end up at. It's the first thing they ask you is well, what you is, <laughs> what you are. Like you know? what gang are you in? Right. And sure. I was like I'm like I'm half Jewish. <laughs> so you went from Joliet to where? You went to, a to medium Dixie. or minimum? It's a well, it's a spread level. They have both medium, uh, maximum, and minimum at Dixon. Correction, shout out Dixon Correction Center. In Dixon, Dixon Illinois. Dixon, Illinois. Yeah. Uh, it's like a prison town. Little known fact. Hmm. Ronald Reagan's birthplace. I did not know that. So fuck you twice, Dixon. <laughs> okay. Fuck you twice, two <laughs> times for that. Yeah. So yeah, it's a little prison town. Yeah, that's where I ended up. And uh, yeah, that's the first thing they ask you when you have the bus. What, what you is. Yeah. Uh, it's, a, it's a culture shock, but prison is a lot different than jail for people who have been to jail but have never actually been to prison. Yeah, what what do you think the biggest difference is? Everything. Okay, what, prison, tell me what's the difference in everything. Prison is way better. Well, so people used to fucking tell me that, but like, I, I don't, and oh, in some no. ways, yes, but I, I don't know if I agree with that. And, uh, well, if, you're, if you have to do 
a day or sure. a week sure. jail. Okay. But if you got to do some time. A year. Yeah. Prison. Six months. Yeah. Three months. Yeah. You know what I mean? Jail's horrible, which is crazy, right? Because if you think about it, you're supposed to be, 90% of the people in jail are awaiting trial. Yeah. So they're presumed innocent. Mm -hmm. So why is it when you plead guilty or found guilty, you move up a whole star and a half on your reservation? <laughs> it doesn't make any, like, it's like, okay, I was found guilty. Shit, now what? They're like, now you're going to get better food. <laughs> yeah. You're going to go outside once a day. Yeah. You're going to have free access to a gym slash health club. Okay. That wasn't, yeah, right. sure. You're going to have a TV in your cell. Oh, yeah, yeah. You TVs were I mean? everything. You know, oh, commissary. Yeah, yeah. You like, you like eating tuna? <laughs> we got tunas for you. Okay. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, prison's way... And, yeah, drugs and access. Oh, yeah, but I mean, that's in, in at least, I don't know about like in the smaller jails, but in Cook County... Yeah, you, I guess. It's the same shit. It's just sure. more expensive. Sure, yeah, yeah. I mean, I there were like a lot of pills in in county yeah. for me, but then prison is when I saw like real drugs. Oh, yeah. You know? Yeah, which is, it's amazing like how... You told me you did acid in prison. Who? Fucking out of your mind. I love you so much. Yeah. I I would not have been interested in that, but like, what was that like? <laughs> Intense. Yeah. 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 Do you, did you like, like trip out in the sense that you're like, I'm in prison and I'm on acid and this is so fucked up. I don't belong here. Yeah. It was like during an interesting time in the prison. Uh -huh. In your stay? How yeah. long had you been there? Well, I'd been there about a year and yeah, a half. Yeah, I guess you were bored. So, and like, yeah, like at that time, things were going crazy. Like, we had a guard at night that pretty much let us uh, run do whatever. Away a bit. Yeah. yeah. It was nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, there are some of them that are like that. Not that they're chill, but they're like, they can be bought. Yeah. No, but they were like, uh, like uh, sweet tarts. So it came in on candy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I ate a couple of those. Uh, took Axy pill. All right. Yeah, so that was fun. Yeah, and the and the other. Yeah, uh, I've done I've done pretty much pretty much any drug you can think of outside. We've done. Yeah. In prison. So when you got to Dixon, mm -hmm. what was your life like when you were there? And uh, it was just culture shock. But one, the amount of small freedoms you get. In Dixon receiving versus uh, Joliet. Joliet or Cook County. Yeah. I, mean, I was amazed by it. I was amazed by yard, gym, mm, yeah. walking to chow. Yeah. I was like, this really isn't that bad. <laughs> it's so crazy how like after being caged up in a cell, those really simple things mm -hmm. like being able to go outside and walk to where your food is instead of having it brought to your cell, like that, that 10 minutes outside it replenishes you and makes you feel like a human oh, being yeah, yeah. again. Just a little bit of sunlight. Yeah. What's crazy too is it, well, no. I was going to say it almost felt like the acclimation to the outside was taking longer than the acclimation to when I got to prison, but I'm not counting that month and a half in NRC. Yeah. You know, because you get, you get to it pretty quick. You figure out a schedule and, mm -hmm. you know, and you just pretty much spend time, like, uh, learning who to avoid for the most part. Yeah. And well, and who did you need to avoid? I mean, it's like, you know what I mean? You don't want to be around, like, the like the sexual predators, you know, right. uh, guys in there for creep cases, you know, rapists, stuff like that. Um, did you make friends? I mean, like, you're, oh, yeah. you're very friendly. Oh, yeah. No, I, I talked to some people right now still. That are, yeah, that are still in, that are really? friends of yours. I, I did not, I like made friends, but at the same time when I got out, I was just kind of like that, that, it, that didn't happen and it's over. You yeah. Know, you know, I, I like feel like I had to do that for a little while, but then it was also sort of like a distancing myself from that experience. There were so many times over the last two years where I would like a ask your girlfriend for your information so that I could write to you. And then I would sort of like and you know I like love to write letters, yeah. but it, it like uh, it was almost a weird like like PTSD sort of thing. Is like I would get to a point where I'd have like a pen and paper, and then I just kind of like, <gasps> and I like couldn't. You know what I mean? They might have confiscated your letter anyway. <laughs> Why would they do that? Because you have uh, right. Because we are not allowed to have contact. Right. We're not even technically supposed to be here together. Right. Like one time she's like, man, she's like, you maybe. Uh, well, no, I can't because you're not on parole. Oh, right. I wanted to come uh, visit you, though. You can't. Yeah. No, never. Wow. Mm -hmm. Fuck, dude. It's 
crazy. Yeah. So, okay. So now you're like trying to find your place and like what, what what's your yeah, place in prison? It's hard to find. If you are a white, non-affiliated, meaning like not a gang member uh, yeah. and you don't want to hang out with creepy white people. Right. Gross people. You don't really have a whole lot of options. Yeah. So what were your options? You got to hang out with black people. Well, I mean, sure. Or Latinos. Yeah. I know you find a couple cool. I mean, it's just, you just kind of get in. Like it's surprisingly a lot like high school. Yeah. You just navigate. Isn't it you funny? Know. Comedy's the same way. Yeah. <laughs> you just navigate. I mean, there's like, you know, the guys that control things, you know, there's the guys that kind of control the gambling, guys that control the drugs, guys that control the phones, guys that control the laundry. Yeah. Everybody's got their own, you know, and you just find out. You know, I'm a, I'm pretty good at being a, a middleman, so I just you're kinda, great at it, right? So I just do what I do and just bob around, socialize. Yeah, and you're very funny and yeah. like charming, and and you've got a, a lot of like interesting opinions, and I love hearing you like rant about shit. Thanks. Yeah, so yeah. it's really funny. I was telling you this earlier in the car, but it was like. I used to tell you for years and years and years, James, you have to do comedy. Yes. So do you feel like I sort of stole your thunder a little bit by starting no, before this you? this is great. Even though I'm I've been looking, blacklisted. I've been looking for coattails to ride <laughs> my whole I life. mean, mine is not going to be the one you want to get oh, on, cool, but man. sure. That's cool. Like, so everyone hates you. That's great. Yeah. You know who else everyone hates? Who? Insane Clown Posse. <laughs> Are you comparing you, me to the Insane Clown Posse? Do you know how much money the Insane Clown Posse made last year? No, actually, how much? Let's just say a little shy of $10 million. All right, word. Hate. Yeah. It gets paid. Yeah. I told you, and it makes it full circle. You started your whole journey with this love angle. Right, so let's get back to that for a second. So, like, you met me when I was, like, fully... Like drinking the Kool Aid of sunshine and rainbows, and so what did I say in the car, and what was our conversation ten years ago? Well, I, please. So I want to hear it out of your mouth. I had told you, I believe it was about ten years ago, that you can't you can't keep that energy up. Yeah, that there's no way you can if you're going to stay that passionate about things. Yeah, the love's going to eventually turn to hate. Yeah, you're gonna, you know what I mean? Because like, hate's not the opposite of love. Uh, apathy. apathy is yeah. the opposite of love, yeah. like not caring at all yeah. about things. Yeah. That's the opposite of love. Yeah. So, and then in the car, you were like talking about an individual. You know, actually, I just hate him. I hate everybody. <laughs> and I was like, the cycle is complete. <laughs> I know. Full ten circle, years. 10 years. And you even told yeah. me, mm -hmm. you fucking told me 10 years ago <sighs> that you couldn't wait mm -hmm. until the day that I fucking said that. And then like just completely by yeah. happenstance, was it was there. today. I was there. I just, wow. Like so much wow. So I hate everybody. Yeah, you Not held you. out longer than I thought. I'll give you that. <laughs> you held out a lot longer. Because uh, yeah. I, like I said, I met you in my early 20s. And by then, I had just, I almost skipped right to the apathy phase. That's your next phase. Oh, great. Is this. Oh, I can't wait. Is what you're looking at. Right. Where just like, you're just indifferent to everything. Right. I'm definitely not there yet because I have like a deep seething hatred yeah. for a couple of people. And like. Let it, let it burn. <laughs> let it burn out. That's what it's going to do. You, you know what I mean? That's, and then eventually you just don't. You become so, and it helps you out if you, if you happen to go to prison. I yeah, guess. I mean, I don't really want to go back to prison, but I also yeah. don't ever want to date anyone ever again as long as I Yeah, live. well, I don't, I, don't, I don't blame you. I shouldn't, Dating right? Dating people is horrible. Well, yeah, I also just have like some sort of weird magnetic attraction to like the worst people that could right. ever live. So it's just, I mean, it's, I think the problem is me because like you've seen every boyfriend I've had for the last 10 years and like I sure know how to pick up. Yeah, you're horrible. <laughs> and it's not going to get any better because once you get in your 30s, there's only like so many different flavors of people oh, you get to date. Thanks. It is, well, I mean, if you want to- Blooming, cool. Right, you get, if you want to date uh, 19, 20, 22 year olds, you can do that. It's an option. It's like having a handgun in Chicago. <laughs> it's like technically legal, but you can't bring it anywhere. But if you want to date people your own age, you have anyone who is single 
at our age, single for a reason. That's a good point. And I guess, <laughs> I mean, it's fair to say that I'm crazy. But oh, pr- yeah. but prison, like, and I, I mean, this affected you in, in a probably a, a different way, but in some ways very similar. Like, prison makes you crazy. It definitely does. Or you have to be, like I said, my advanced... Apathy helped me in ways help like, you get through. Yeah, because you can just I can you can just disconnect from everything. Like we were playing cards and we were gambling. Yeah, and prison's weird, so ten dollars is a lot of money. Yeah, it we is. Yeah, ten dollars in the game. <laughs> and all of a sudden some guy starts getting stabbed over in the phone booth next to us. <laughs> okay. Right. So I look over, whoop, I'm like, holy shit. And my thought is I'm like, we better hurry up and finish this hand. <laughs> Okay, so like I guess I mean it's not that like like women's prisons aren't violent, but violent in a very different way. So like what like what did you think? Because you're not a violent person. Have you no. ever even been in a fight? I've been in a few fights, yeah. But have you like minor? Not like like uh, like I saw a guy lose his eyeball. Well, okay, were you in fights in prison? Do yeah. people pick on you? Because you mean, were at white. First, yeah, at first, you know what I mean. And kind of Aryan looking. I do kind of, which is crazy. I know. Did you have With to the like Jewish roots? Well, also, but like, the, how did the how did like the skinheads like like react to you? Did they try and get you in, or were they like you're not one of us? Well, no, that's what I'm saying. Now. So I was uh, filling out for a kosher train. Okay. And also for a uh, religious medallion. Yeah. I'll explain that later. <laughs> I got it. So. And uh, there was some white hick from like Danville or some. Not mm-hmm. like I'm not calling out Danville. You, know, <laughs> you can large, call out Danville. Large audience in Danville. I'm sure. <laughs> it was, uh, it was, uh, it was crazy. And he's always like, I don't know. He just starts uh, shooting some anti Semitic slurs. And I'm not like full Jewish. Like we just got some Jewish on my dad's. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah, I guess by Jewish law, you wouldn't even technically no, be considered it's a your Jew. No, because mom, right. Right. I just got the hair and the sarcasm. <laughs> That's all we got. <laughs> and the charm. Right. And the charm. <laughs> so anyway, so he just starts calling me uh, Jew or Jew boy. Yeah. So that uh, became my prison nickname. Oh. So it happened within like three days. Mine was coconut. Oh, let's see. Did you get to pick that? No, because I was, the coconut's right. like a derogatory term for like a Latin person right. who acts white. White. Yeah, I got so it. So it was like a, like their version of like Twinkie or right. Oreo. Oreo. Yeah. <laughs> and I, but I mean, I like yeah. I wasn't that insulted by it because I'm like I love coconuts. Right. Fucking fuck you. Right. You know. <laughs> Coconuts are delicious. Yeah, so Jew Boy probably didn't hurt your feelings it either. It really didn't. It was like, it just owned it. And I didn't realize I had then later met an inmate, white inmate, about my age, uh, who was like, call me Lionheart. <laughs> and I like looked at his ID and I was like, no, Danny. I will not be calling you Lionheart. I didn't I'm surprised know. he didn't punch you for that. No, it wasn't. It wasn't that kind of situation. It wasn't, you know what I mean? No, and also, like, this was a dude who gave himself the nickname <laughs> Lionheart. Lionheart. So I don't know, he's not, like, punching anything at the moment. <laughs> in time. Fair, fair, fair. You know, and I didn't know, and that's why I, I, like, I was like, wait, you get to pick your own <laughs> prison nickname? <laughs> I didn't know. I could have been spending that time in NRC and Juliet. Max power. <laughs> so much better. Right. Kill, kill switch. <laughs> All right. So let's talk about how some things never change. Like the fact that I was two hours late to pick you up. Yep. And the fact that you were, shall we say, an entrepreneur? Mm, always. <laughs> All right. Tell me about your, I mean, was this your side hustle or your main hustle? Which one are we talking about? Well, you know which one I'm talking about. No, 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 no. <laughs> I mean, okay. Tell me about your tell me about your hustles in prison. Oh yeah, well it's, not, it's just like you got you got to find a hustle in prison, you know. And like I am a a facilitator of goods. <laughs> You're a man who can get things. Yeah, I'm like a fence. I like that. <laughs> they use use that uh, term in heist movies, like fence. Yeah. I'm like, you got something you want to get rid of? <laughs> I got something that wants to buy it. Right. Okay. You trying to buy something? Yeah. I got something. Might be trying to get rid of that. And you had like special privileges because of yeah, your charges. Yeah, they gave me outside. I had a, I had a non-violent drug offense. I got no violence in my background. They gave me outside ground clearance, which pretty much gave me free reign to move about an already kind of open prison. 
so I could go not completely off grounds, but past the fence in the parking lot, stuff like that. Damn. Yeah. So is that kind of wild? Sort of having this taste. Did you ever feel like you wanted to run? No, because I'm slow and fat. And <laughs> like I'm not an idiot. Sure. sure. I, think, I think it was like one of the reasons too. They like they like went through my files. Like this guy, out of shape, smart enough to know he's out of shape. I'm not going to try to run. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Well, fair. But yeah, there is. Um, so what were you doing with so, your privileges? Yeah, when they give you special privileges, you can work with like the inside, other outside grounds, inside grounds crew to get uh, contraband yeah. into the jail, yeah. which is super fun. Yeah, and what kind of contraband were you getting? And what kind of contraband would you like? <laughs> so fucking just whatever. Yeah, so, yeah. Like I said, very different. Like we would get stuff. If you fuck the guards, they would give you whatever yeah, you want, yeah. you know, but like you guys, how, oh, did, that, you, how also, did you get it though? That goes on. Really? Oh, yeah. Oh. Oh, yeah. Oh, my. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. All the transsexual prisoners in Illinois, for the most part, are in Dixon Corrections. Yeah. So there's been quite a few. Okay. Yeah. Wow, that's so interesting. So, so that even, is another way. Even trans women are experiencing, like, like. so, I, I mean, that's just, like, so interesting because I have had some... I don't want to say like fear necessarily, but like I, I'm like wondering how in in time how everything that I'm putting out there is sort of gonna play out. You know what I mean? If like because I've recently just sort of been like called a liar online, you know, not because of this podcast, but because of like other things. And so I think that it's really interesting, like the lengths that men will go to discredit women when they're like coming out about abuse, especially like some sort of like sexual abuse. So like, I'm curious how like in, in time, like my stories will like, like play out, you know what I mean? But so I think this is really interesting that I like as a male who's just recently got out of prison, you can sort of like verify what I'm saying as far as like the sexual corruption in prisons go. Oh, yeah. You know, so like, so yeah. like the transsexual women or transsexual women. Mm -hmm. it, well, it, I mean, yeah. However, you. I, yeah, I'm not really. Sure, I'm not really right, sure yeah. the exact in, right when you're terminology in, when you're in prison. Mm -hmm. They're dudes, right? But like, but like they're they're trans. Yeah, they definitely are. Like, like right now, yeah, they're women. They want to be women. They identify as women. Right. But, so they're and they're and they're having sex with the guards. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All of them. Right. Yeah. Whether mean, they want it or not. No, I, I, there's not a whole, as far, well, I can say that when I was there, there was no even uh, accusations of that. Of rape? No. Okay. Like anytime there was like, uh, there's like a whole uh, division set up to look at like sexual abuse in prison and like all the PREA charges and the guards are usually just bogus for the most part. Interesting. In, Dixon Corrections for the two years I was there. Okay, and which was I the last speak, two years. Yeah, so I can't speak. Of, I never heard anything. Now, I have heard of there being consensual relationships. Okay. As consensual as a relationship between a correction officer and an inmate can be. Excellent point. But these girls were getting paid. Paid to have sex? Oh, God, yeah. Wow. From the inmates. Oh my God. And from. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Whoa. Mm -hmm. That's a whole different thing. Yeah. And I mean, it's so crazy that even as like a transsexual man still has more privilege in, in sex trade than like women do. That's mm -hmm. so fucking fucked up. Mm -hmm. But, um, I mean, okay. Yes. So go on. So like. I'm sorry. I'm, it's like hard for me to keep track of where we even are right now because I'm just feeling like, okay, you just like are, are sort of backing me up in a way that I really appreciate, especially right now in this moment in time. But like, so you've got this hustle going on because you have this like special privilege to go off grounds. Yeah. Now tell me more about like the inner workings of like what you were, what you were bringing, what you were doing with it, and then the benefits you received. Well, I mean, you pretty much, I don't want to go into too specifics of the mechanics Sure, cause because it's still going on. Exactly. So pretty much packages are left outside or uh, inside the facility before the security checkpoints. Yeah. I finagle them 
past a security checkpoint mm-hmm. where uh, either outside uh, in another outside grounds guy can get it back to a housing unit mm-hmm. or an inside ground unit. Because like when you have that type of clearance, you get searched before you get back in the housing unit. Yep. So you want to get it somewhere where somebody else can get it, get it back into the house. Smart. So, so that's smart. How, that's how you spread everything yeah. around in there. And that's how most of the contraband that I know of got in that way. Like there's a couple of phones. Um, you got your hard drugs, you got sure. your club drugs, party drugs. Yeah. Um, Cigarettes, alcohol. Tobacco. Not alcohol, no. That's hard to get they, in. I mean, there's nothing to just make it. Right, hooch. Right. There's a yeah. whole there's a whole industry <laughs> around hooch. Right. That's interesting. That's yeah. interesting. So it's like there's just like th- there's a lack of need for that. So even though that's something that you probably like one of the least illegal things to acquire and that's not even something that you're interested in that's funny it's the logistics yeah 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 because a bottle is hard and and it doesn't last very long no and then what are you going to do with one bottle right of liquor get drunk a little bit you can you can bring in five grams of heroin or five grams of coke and And i suppose you'd want to do more heroin than drink if you could have one or the other No, i mean you would sell if you could bring in 500 gallons yeah. of liquor. <laughs> you could move it. You would, you, then you would be bringing in liquor. Yeah. But like, what are you going to sell? $10 shots? Right. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny how the economy of that sort of system works. That's just right. very strange and interesting. Well, I'm like fascinated the, by even it. Even like the cigarettes, they bring in a cigarette. If they're actual cigarettes, and that's usually uh, guards bring those in. The actual cigarettes, and uh, if it's an actual cigarette, they'll bust uh, one cigarette down into four roll-ups, and then sell each one of those for four dollars. Yeah. So they're really making six, call it twenty dollars off a of, uh, one cigarette. So how much money were you making by bringing in all of this stuff? Like, because you're so instrumental to to that that trade, you know? 100 to 200 bucks a week. That's like, I mean, that's good prison money. Mm -hmm. (laughs) What'd you do with all that? Ate it. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, it's hard. It's so bored. Yeah, and I wouldn't say, it's uh, probably about every every two weeks you get about about 100. I mean, you know what I mean? It wasn't uh, crazy. It's not, it's consistent. It just wasn't... um, it wasn't real drug money like we're used to. Right. And it's like the guys that I was messing with was smart because you can't flood a prison mm. with any one thing at any one time. Smart. Because I watched it firsthand. Like the first time I knew that this had happened, that it came in, I'm watching guys out in the day room, not out in the ice machine. I'm like, I'm like, oh, we're all going to jail. <laughs> You're in jail. Right. We're in we're in jail and we are gonna go to jail. <laughs> We were going to go to SEG. This uh, guy's an idiot. I had eaten a bunch of edibles. Did you ever get sent to solitary? No. I escaped solitary confinement. Was it as fucked up as it was where I was? Uh, SEG? SEG at our uh, facility, for the most part, was a homosexual uh, fantasy land. <laughs> what? You weren't yeah. alone and naked? No. And fa- that's a crisis. If you go, like, you feel like a mental, like, I'm going to kill myself. Uh, <laughs> well, I guess, I don't know, just because of my, like, history or whatever. It might be different with women. Yeah. I don't well, know. yeah, everyone in SEG was, it was might stripped. Be, it might be different. I don't know. I, I, haven't, I never went through it myself. Oh, okay. But I do know after a couple of days, you get a celly. You go, like, to NRC style with two people. Yeah. So. Uh, transsexuals and the closet and gays mm. are all doing little things to go to SAG. Ah. And they end up getting uh, your own room. Yeah. Or they're doing on the yard in SAG. Dixon's got a yard for SAG that lets you out. It's like a big cage. That's so And crazy. they're just out there just getting it out. They never let us go out. Yeah. And then Dixon's a weird place. Yeah. Fuck, dude. Prison, prison life in general is weird. Yeah. So. So, I mean, how did you get through your time? How did you do two fucking years of this shit? And then you you went to another prison after that even, right? No, I might have to. No, no, I mean like you were at Juliet and then Dixon and then didn't you go to another place? No, I stayed at Dixon. Oh, okay. Yeah, I was going to try to transfer to another place, but that uh, that transfer fell through. The program didn't start. But... uh, when you're trying to just, you just acclimate to 
You know, I mean, it's the same environment. You get plopped in, you spend a week or so kind of just... Learning the lay of the yeah, land. Yeah, checking everything out and then you just kind of see what kind of trouble you get into. Like uh, there's dice games going on, poker games, uh, bet on sport. Every, everything pretty much revolves around uh, gambling for the most part. Yeah, gambling was big. I remember my dad telling me about that. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. funny. Poker's big, spades, tournaments, uh, blackjack, What was your dice. Your poison. Uh, I, I, I got stuck on the card table a lot. <laughs> spades. I fucking hate spades so I, much. You know what? I'll, spades, hearts, bucket. I can still play gin, but like even card games now are really hard for me. Yeah, I don't ever want to touch a deck of cards. What? Like what else do you never want to fucking see again? Dude, uh, like really, like all white shoes, which oh, k- yeah. kills me because I love your kicks all are white fly shoe. though. I do like the new ones I have. Yeah, they look great. And I do like nice shoes. And yeah, I you do, do like white shoes. Okay, but not anymore. No, I'm done. Yeah, because like you got to keep your shoes tight. You got to keep your shoe game tight in, in male prison. Interesting. You have to like wash have, them with a toothbrush. You definitely do. Fuck, dude. Right. Why? Because people make fun of you. It's just that's what you do. You show like my <laughs> shoes are. My you shoes know? are clean. Right. And like, it's like, that's like, because you can't be, you, you can't look broke in prison. What, so what, uh, what is that sort of like mentality of economy where it's like, it, we were talking about this earlier. It's the same as it is in real life where it's like money, money talks, money matters. Mm-hmm. And it matters a lot in prison, but like explain that sort of like power structure. Well, I think there's two reasons money matter in prison, I think. One is because money matters. <laughs> yeah. Everywhere. It doesn't matter. Unfortunately. Prison or Disneyland. I hate money, but yeah. yeah. I mean, but it works. Yeah. Right now. And two, <laughs> and two, because prisons are like a completely self contained micro economy, mm-hmm. there's no reason to be broke in prison because you can make money. And interesting. When you come to prison, you can say, you're whatever, whatever you're. No one in prison is a drug addict in there for stealing PlayStation games. Yeah. If you ask them, if you look them up, they're in there for, everyone in there is a big time hustler <laughs> or a drug dealer <laughs> or a killer. So there's a lot of posturing. Or a gangbang, right? No one's just in here for a domestic. Right. So if you're this big of a hustler, if you're out there hustling off concrete, yeah. you can hustle in here. Yeah. You can make money. Yeah. So people pay attention to that. Like, like so the, the, the first thing are the shoes. People always pay attention to what kind of shoes you're wearing in there. Oh, okay. Yeah, because you could buy real sneakers. You can buy real sneakers and they get new ones every six months. Oh, God. And, like, the guys that have been gone for a while are the guys that you have money with that you have, like, you end up with, like, five pairs of shoes. It's crazy. What the fuck? It's, why even? I don't know. And at first it used to, it's crazy. At first, like, why are they doing all And then you end up doing it yourself. Right, you because know, like, it's sort of, like, also this, like, weird attachment to some sort of autonomy. It's all, it's all we have. Yeah. I don't have a car. Yeah. I don't have a car I can put rims on. Yeah. I do have these new Nikes. <laughs> oh, my God. And I got these, you know, I also got to go with these new Nikes. Huh? Brand new socks. Oh, my God. Because that's how much I'm balling right that's now. That's so stupid. It is, but it's like, I mean, like, it's, you got guys that crack open new uh, undershirts every three months. Yeah. And you got guys that have the same pair of underwear for five years. Ew. Yeah. But you can that's do That's sad, though. But, but it's like, it's because they don't care? Or like, what do you think that, why no, don't they participate? They don't. Because they have you been gone that long, some people just give up. Yeah, like I mean, I f- I felt that way. Right. I did, I mean, because I saw that same sort of like the girls that would like do their nails and like wear makeup, and I'm mm-hmm. like, what the fuck for? Right, and that's how I was at first. But then when you start like committing to like, I'm gonna be a convict. Fuck it. I mean, it- <laughs> I live here now. Right, this is my life. I'm just wasting away. So yeah, yeah. You start. You know, I mean, you keep up with the Joneses. You make sure you have. New jogging pants, new shorts, new... Yeah, I had to keep buying new sweats because I was just getting so fat that I, like, didn't fit in my clothes. I had, like, uh, I think, like, I went from, like, an extra small to, like, an extra large, like, over 11 months. Jill will do that to you. Yeah. Because you eat garbage. Garbage? What, like, what was the food like for you? Because I feel like it's different because I think your food was better. No, like, the actual food they give you is edible. 
Mm. So the, the soy is over with. <laughs> so they got rid of all the soy. So wow. it's actual meat. That was not like it when I was there. No. But I never, I never went to chow because it's easy to be rich in prison. Well, for, so for some people, be, yeah. Yeah, and for anybody because you can do whatever you want in prison and make money. See, we couldn't make money, but it was like if you had people to send you money. No, but you can make, I'm gonna, you, know, you know how many loads of laundry I did? In two years. Oh, okay. Maybe like Like a side, that, another side hustle. Yeah, they do laundry. They do, well, I had a guy wash my bowls yeah. for a whole month. Me too. Yeah, it was great. I paid someone to do that too. That's exactly. so funny. I paid a guy to do your laundry. Yeah. Everything. If I yeah. want to do it, I'm going to be like, let me give you these two tunas. <laughs> I got a, a full fade and a beard lineup twice a month for a bag of powdered milk. That's hilarious. Mm -hmm. Wow. Did you ever feel like you were... A capitalist pig. <laughs> no, because it's because uh, you're not a capitalist in it, real life. It's it's not even uh, I would say capitalism because we're all it's a closed. But that is capitalism because we're all in it, it is, now too. You know, it is well like a but it's like a resource based economy because there's only so many tunas in the deck. Yeah, but you have to use money go, to buy them though. But, but these some people didn't. Oh, because they did it like chores. Well, right. Yeah. That's how most people. Yeah, interesting. You know what I mean? Like most people uh, like will, will leech off someone and they're like, like me, like I'm getting. Were they, so in, in, in women's prison, there were a lot of like girl on girl relationships where like one girl would sort of like pay for the other girl's stuff and then they would like be together because of that. Was there stuff like that? Oh, that's what, that's what I'm saying when I told you them. Them transsexuals got paid. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They like, got paid for the sex. Right. And there was a lot of a lot of inmates that would chase other inmates because of the money. Yeah, I feel that. Yep. Yeah. I, I mean, I had that happen to me a lot, you know? I believe it. Yeah, just like girls would be like so nice to me and then be like, let's date. And I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> We're in jail, you know? It happens all the time. Yeah. Yeah, fuck, dude. So, I mean, you never got busted for any of that stuff? You never got in any trouble or caught? Did you no. ever get close? No. A little bit. There was, uh, they were stealing uh, Town Hall 3s out of the hospital. What is that? It's a painkiller with uh, coating. Oh. And it's been going on for a while, but then they finally must have an inventory. And they noticed like, 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 it was like 1,800 Town Hall 3s were missing. <laughs> Oh my God. Just so, a little bit. Yeah. So they put the whole camp on lockdown for like. Wow. Yeah. Were they looking for them or did they not realize that it had been like they over just, time? Yeah. Because they really didn't do anything. They just put us on a lockdown. Yeah. Said it was for an emergency count. <laughs> yeah. Fucking getting counted to camp. Oh, can't. No. The not only, forget that. The only thing I got in trouble for was uh, that one CO would let us out late. So at like twelve thirty, he'd pop our doors, let us come out, we'd party. It party? Was, oh yeah, we'd be party. We'd be on the phones at wow. like two, three o'clock in the morning. <gasps> what the fuck, dude? Yeah, just, this guy was sweet. Was like, people are up there, we're blowing lines. Yeah. We're fucking eating edibles. Wow. Playing dice in the hallways. I mean, you almost make it sound like it's not it. that bad. It, you... it, at that point, it wasn't. At that moment, you know what I mean? Like you just get like your girl in there. You're like, this would be. <laughs> All right, if they didn't give me a conjugal visit, I could do some time <laughs> like this. Oh, my God. That's so awful and funny. But, yeah, but then, like, uh, like 50 of us all got in trouble for that because they pulled all the records from the phone because uh, somebody, yeah. yeah, somebody told. Of course. So that guy got, really pissed me off, right? So that guy, the CEO, obviously they know that he's letting us do that. And as, I messed with most of the people that got tickets. And as far as I know, nobody threw the CO under the bus. The CO didn't even lose his job, didn't even lose his post. Yeah. And then a week later, he loses his job for bringing in an e-cigarette to work. What? I'm like, you piece of shit. For if himself? I, yeah. That's weird. I know. So it's, could, it's like they were looking for something. So, no, you kids, you can't bring, you can't bring it on... On campus. Right. <laughs> um, yeah, in the prison. <laughs> so, yeah, so he had these works overnight, so we brought it in, and he was vaping oh. in his little side office. Oh. And I was like, you piece of shit, man. If I would have known you were going to do that, I would have thrown your ass right right under the bus. Right, you know? that's so funny. Yeah, that's the only major ticket I got. 
and they don't really, I mean, you, it, they put you on a C grade. Yeah. What does that mean? That means you cannot use the phone mm. or purchase commissary. Yeah. So give me one month yeah. of C grade. Yeah. Oh man. I remember lesson, that. Lesson learned. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so like no food and no phone, like you might as well go fucking kill yourself, you know? Yeah, but I had the side hustle. Yeah, that's true. And just like anything else in there, there's a way around. Everything. Yeah, like you sure. just use somebody else's PIN number. Yeah, and then there you go. Boom. And then like hustle your food in, so. Simple. Yeah. I or mean, send money to somebody else. Where there's a will, there's a way. Yeah, you can definitely get around. Yeah, just about anything. That's, wow. I mean, so it's just almost like the real world, you it, know? It's just, it's just different. Yeah. It's just a different, it's like a real... Uh, Macho, yeah, you know, tough guy. How do you feel about the prison complex sort of becoming this evolved form of slavery where it targets minorities and people of color in particular to join this sort of unpaid workforce that is sort of propping up American industry right now? Like, what did you think about that? Or is that something that you even became aware of like while you were in jail? I mean, because Illinois doesn't do that. So Illinois has uh, correction industries, but they only service uh, like state workers. Okay. And stuff like that, as far as I know. like Because Dixon makes eyeglasses. Well, so the prison I went to, they made like like textiles and signs and stuff. Okay. See, but that, now, as far as I know, that's all that stuff's got to go... To the state. Yeah. Yeah. It was all for the state. Yeah. That's what I mean. Right. Okay. So, so it's not a, it's not a, a there, we're not making casings for a, a phone. You know what I mean? It's so, I but guess. There, but I can, there are some prisons that do do that in this country. There definitely are. I'm just saying I can kind of justify Illinois' industry program. Sure. Because at least you're giving back directly to the state. Yeah. And they're not. But still, it's slave labor. It definitely is. But in Illinois, it's not forced. You don't have to... Right, that's true. Well, you do have to work. But no. you don't have to work in industry. You don't have to work. Well, we did. No, I Everyone mean, had to have a job, even if it was like cleaning the bathrooms. Yeah, that, that could have just been like your CO. But like, according to IDOC, you don't have to have uh, an assignment. You can be unassigned. Interesting. Yeah. I and wonder why it was changed. different. It might have been... It's been a few years. They might have changed it. Yeah, that's but true. But at least at Dixon, you can, you can sit unassigned. Wow, yeah. Ours, it's like you had to be in a program or you had to have a job. No, that is not how Dixon was. Wow, okay. So, I don't know. I don't even know. I guess that that's a non-opinion from you because that's that, that's enlightening to me, actually. I mean, I'm not for it. I just have, like, no... Yeah, no comment. ...firsthand or experience to, like, really... And that's, that's like, horrible, it's obviously. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, I'm not, like... I look at that, I'm not, like, for it. I'm like, no, it's all right. Yeah. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, what do you think? How should I, where should I go from here? Sorry, yeah. I'm sorry. Okay, yeah, I knew this was going to be a long one. Um, so if there's any, like, tips or tricks. Oh, like, wait, I guess we should talk about getting out and then parole a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's get out of prison. Yeah, okay. Right, cool. So... <clears throat> Wait, and then tips and tricks of what? No, no, skip it. You okay. Did. Yeah. Okay, so... <clears throat> oh, sorry, let me just have a little stretch. <sighs> I'm tired. That was a lot. Are you tired? Wait, you're still going. <laughs> I'm sorry, it I'm sorry. A, it is a lot. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So you did your two years. Yes. And now you're going to get out. I am out. I mean... <laughs> But, like, let's go back a little bit. So, like, you're about to get out. Yes. Let's say you're, like, three, one, three, two, one month out. What was that which, like? Which one are we talking about? I mean, just start back. Start okay, so three months, you start getting, like, really the 99th day. Once you're, like, done past. Right, triple digits. Triple digits I remember that. Right. And then, for at least for me, I just tried to just stay in like bid mode. Just try to not even think about it. Yeah. Just be like, I'm in prison. Because it's overwhelming. It's crazy. The anticipation and the anxiety. About, about four weeks out, I started like staying up late at night, mm. like, oh shit, this is real. Yeah. It's you coming know. close. Were you excited? Were you nervous? Were you scared? Everything. Well, I'm not, not scared really. I was just like, just excited, nervous. Just like 
just waiting to actually have it happen. Yeah. Like actually just walk out. Yeah. And yeah. and then and then the day came. And then it felt great. Yeah. And it was a whole bunch of like excitement followed by like a crippling wave of anxiety. Sure. You know, it was just like Yeah, it's so I got, overwhelming. I got car sick. <gasps> no. Yeah, because I hadn't been in a car for like two years. So yeah. I was like, what is wrong with the Were you in the front seat or the back seat? Front seat. Wow. So I was like, I just started feeling nauseous. I was like, and then we tried to go, um, we came back through Rockford, mm-hmm. tried to go to the mall. Mm. The day you got out? Yes. Why? Why? Because I was just like, fuck it. Let's make a bunch of bad decisions. <laughs> you know, we both love bad right. decisions. So I was like, let me see that oil pen. Yeah. <gasps> nice. So right away, right you away, were like I'm on that tick. I'm in this. Yeah. It yeah. took me like a week to get back to it. And I met up with Hannah and she gave me like a joint. And I, I honestly cried because I was like, I haven't felt like myself since right this moment. Yeah. It helped. It helped out a lot. Yeah. At, later. At first, it, it was like overwhelming. Hey. Sure. So, yeah. So we try to go to the mall at Rockford and like, because I got to buy clothes, which is stupid because I can't like, shouldn't try I shouldn't have even tried to try and close those in my right mind anyway because like when you start going home from prison and, and from you start working out crazy like I've been working out the whole time but I'm like bench pressing 300 pounds so I'm looking like like I'm on steroids so I'm like going to the mall like I just like worked out like a maniac the mm-hmm. day before mm-hmm. so I'm like trying to button up all these tiny little shirts <laughs> I'm like, nothing fits. Oh, so uh, so weird, yeah. Yeah, so and it was just like everything like... It's all, different. Right, when there was like... So I'm like with my girlfriend, mm-hmm. and there was like so many other girls around. <laughs> and I like to apologize. I'm like, listen, I can't help myself. I'm like, I haven't seen... Women. Women in two years, in so bu- I'm just like... Yeah, in the flesh, s- wow. Surrounded by butts. <laughs> Which is like nice, but also you're just probably like sensory overload. It was, it was. Man, I went like uh, she went to a candle store. I couldn't take it. It was like getting punched in the face. Yeah, I'm like, I'm gonna stay out here. It smells right with the butts. Yeah, I'm gonna stay out here <laughs> where the butts are. And then, so what did you do like your first night out? Uh, nothing. I went back home. It took me like four hours to get through the mall. Yeah, because like one, I had I got pretzel dog, which was amazing. <laughs> And but yeah, I kept trying to buy because I knew I had no clothes. So I kept trying to like force myself to buy clothes, and I just kept buying cool pairs of socks. <laughs> so weird, right? But I have like an awesome sock collection right now. Yeah, I mean, whatever. You know, I know they're great. Yeah, like I, I mean, got, too bad it's summer, but like yeah. But it's gonna be winter <laughs> eventually, and then I'm gonna have those socks. I know, it's, but then you're gonna wear pants. Well, that's how you you wear them. And you wear pants that are short enough. So I know my sock game's proper. Okay. I don't, I don't need, to, I need, to, I need to get cred for you on my sock. <laughs> I'm sorry. Do you have any socks with Easy E's picture on them? No. Okay, that's what I thought. <laughs> I have two pairs. Okay. I mean, you, you've always been cooler than me, so that's yeah, fine. That's, uh, that's not a contest. <laughs> but I have I have the Taurus B.I.G. sock. <laughs> and I have Van Gogh socks. Ooh. And I have, a, I have a white class. I like sock. Well, and my, my uh, alter ego... <laughs> As a mild mannered businessman, <laughs> I have to dress my, you know what I mean, relatively low key. Yeah. And uh, like casual. So that's my little sneak in. Yeah, for like, sure. Hey, I'm still, so I ended up buying just an ass load of these socks. Like I have, uh, <laughs> familiar with the Wu Tang Clan? Yes. Well, I know I have, I know I have pairs of, I know, I know I have <laughs> pairs of socks that probably display the 36 Chamber album cover. <laughs> okay. The Triumph. <laughs> Nice. Uh, the yeah, Wu Tang Forever yeah. album cover. Fuck yeah. Jizz of liquid uh, digital swords okay. or liquid swords. So you have a lot of socks. Yeah. You're out. I'm out. I got a bunch of socks, still no clothes. What's your fucking like game plan now for the rest of your life? Like how, because we, how the fuck do you become a person? I don't know, man. It's crazy. Like there are an insane amount of hurdles yeah. in front of you when you get out. Like I am, uh, I don't like to use this word. Um, I don't want to say blessed, but I'm positioned better than 99% of people that come out of prison because I have I some job opportunities, yeah, stuff like that. Um, but no, I mean, if I had to go out and just like randomly pick up a job right now, I have no idea how they don't want me to go back to uh, allegedly selling drugs. <laughs> 
<laughs> allegedly intending <laughs> to sell to drugs. Sell drugs. <laughs> but I don't know what they really want me to do. I mean, you you go. I went in there, uh, a drug dealer. Yeah. I came out a drug dealer <laughs> with better connections and who's a lot like physically stronger. Like doesn't like make any sense. No, and, yeah, yeah. That's completely right. psycho. It's like I like went in there with like, you know, four good hookups. Yeah. And like I could do like a push up. <laughs> and I have like ten like kingpin level connections. And I can bench press three hundred pounds. Like they just create a monster. Right, right. That has your ten dollars at work. You are like the nicest, most generous, fair, like compassionate people that I know, like one of, and I've known you for a fucking decade. Sounds about right. Sounds so, like me. So, I mean, like, it's fucked up that you were even sent to jail in oh, the I, first place. I would bring that up almost every day <laughs> because we had uh, two guards and one of, they were like trying to bet on like who had what kind of charge. They call me over and they're like, hey man, uh, like all secretive. <laughs> and he's like, hey man, if you don't mind me asking, what are you here for? <laughs> I look at him. I'm like, I'm like drugs, man. I'm like, why did you just ask me over there? Do you think I was here for a sex case? Oh, you know what I mean. Well, you, I mean, I don't know why they would think that about because you. Because white. Oh, because that's usually Most what they're of the there white for. White people in there for their for sex cases. Wow, fuck, dude, fuck. Yeah, most of the white women I met where it was either like drugs or like they killed someone. Yeah, no, it's like DUIs, uh, and then like. Rapey child shit. Yeah, there's like a lot of meth in the middle of Illinois. Yeah, there is. There's a lot of meth charge, but usually like the meth people are there for like other related like theft. stealing. Yeah. yeah, yeah, sure. But it's but I mean they're they're there for meth, you know. Yeah, definitely. Wow. So I mean, fuck. I love you. I'm so happy. I'm super excited to be a part of this. Yeah. Thank you for coming here. Thanks um, for like. I would like to come back. Existing. Yeah. I mean, like, I I don't want you to get arrested again, but I no. do feel like there's more we can oh, talk I about. Have, you know. If we're just swapping arrest stories. I mean, I you've got a bunch. I have like a supernatural run. <laughs> what? Fifteen C's. I just saw it on the internet today. <laughs> That show Supernatural is still on TV. <laughs> it's been on TV for 15 years. Well, okay, so if you enjoyed this episode, please reach out to us on Instagram or at that time I got arrested. Particularly if you enjoyed James, let me know. I've been receiving a lot of messages and I love that you guys are telling me what you think and how this shit makes you feel. If you want him back, I am more than down for that. Um, also, you know, potentially getting some live shows put together. And if you'd like to see James at a live show, please let me know. Like, I want to hear from you guys and what you're interested in. Um, I know some people have been reaching out to me and want to, like, meet up, like, the live show. That's a great place to do it. So um, I love you guys. Bon voyage. That's how I end up. <laughs> you didn't know that. I, 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 I figured that was a bon voyage. Yeah. <laughs>